Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another weekly Wednesday live stream. I'm Peter. And I'm Monkit. And you know him by now. Or, well, Lee. Yes. Oh, yeah, we, we agreed to call you Lee, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. You're We've still a bit smaller that. than me. We, uh, we're working on that. Um, he, he still has a lot of room to grow. But um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But that's OK. Um, Anyway, uh, great to see you all joining the live stream. Welcome, everybody, of course. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, two main things, really. Uh, one is right here on the table, which is a new keyboard that we're going to show you guys. Uh, it's a really nice, uh, a really nice, yeah, I guess we can call it entry-level mechanical keyboard. So uh, it's more affordable, uh, but it still has uh, that good mechanical switch inside. Um, I see two boxes. Yeah, you have sharp eyes. And we have a good camera. Uh, you're right. Uh, but you'll see what that's about later on. Um, and we have, of course, a game and a giveaway. And the giveaway is the game we're going to be playing and looking at today. Uh, and there's a reason <coughs> we're looking at this game. And I also saw some people in the chat already asking, hey, why, why is this like a typical console game, Sonic? Which, yeah, it, it very much used to be always a, a console game, uh, traditionally. And uh, why, why are we covering that? I mean, we're a PC company. Um, well, there is a reason for that, and you'll find out why. N I mean, uh, apart from the obvious one that we're giving away uh, uh, two game keys for uh, for the game itself, uh, which uh, thank you Sega for uh, providing those. Um, yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, but yeah, how to enter the giveaway? Well, as always, there is a uh, or there's going to be a link in the chat uh, on. Facebook and Twitch. The other platforms, if you're watching there, unfortunately, uh, yeah, those platforms don't like it if we share uh, URLs or links in the chat, so it's a bit more iffy. So if you want to make sure you don't miss the uh, giveaway link, you can always go to our uh, YouTube or Twitch channel chat. And there, uh, our chatbot stream elements should post the link every five minutes. If it doesn't do that, please let us know. Uh, because sometimes it does have some issues, and then we can, uh, we can fix that, or we can uh, see if we can fix it. Or Lee can, uh, uh, if all else fails, he can become the chatbot himself. Yeah, he I can, can uh, post no the link in the chat every, uh, well, I don't know, it won't be every five minutes. That's maybe a bit more much, but hey. Um, anyway, and that the, you know, if you follow that link, that should show you how to participate. Uh, and uh, as always, the more actions you perform, the more points you have. The more points you have, the better your chance of winning. So that's how, kind of how that works, and it's a, a you know a random draw uh, through Gleam, which again it's a, an online system that allows you to uh, to draw winners and stuff like that. Hi, Ed Roxon. Is it true you need to open Epic Games Launcher to play Sonic on Steam? No, you don't need that. Uh, at, at least we tried well, it out, and we didn't need it. Well, as far as I know. It does, I, I did notice that it, indeed, when I launched the game the first time, because we also got a code, we, you know, we, we claimed it to uh, one of our company accounts so that we can you know, show you uh, it on live stream and stuff like that. It did actually uh, launch Steam, uh, sorry, uh, Epic, right after I uh, clicked to start the game on Steam. So it, uh, I think you, you're onto something there. Mm. Um, so, but it might also be because Skeets is saying, yeah, only if you bought it on Epic. So it might be that we, the codes that we were given were kind of like, you know, they could be redeemed on either platform or something, or maybe they were meant for, uh, they were always linked to, to Epic. I'm not sure. It's a, like a technical thing, I guess. Anyway, uh, it didn't really bother me afterwards. I mean, it was one time, and then now when I start the game, it doesn't show Epic again. So, But it might want to link to an Epic account. I'm not sure about that. Any other good questions? I see you scrolling see. through the chat, Lee. Yeah. Merry Christmas, lol. Well, that's <laughs> Never a too bit early. early. Oh God, it's on Twitch. Yeah, it's our uh, yeah, it's it's our it's our bot. It's a, is it the night bot or what was it? I think it's a night bot, oh, isn't I it? I think it yeah. is. Yeah, it's still a running gag. We haven't found the password for it still. Uh, <laughs> but hey, it adds a bit to the seasonality, doesn't it? At it least really it's getting does. colder where we are, so it's 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 a bit more apt, I guess. Uh, hey, from Turkey. Cool. Uh, good to see you joining, Emiran. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, will you all make a successor for the VR17RE? Oh, God. I think our, wasn't that the, the backpack PC, the one that you could strap onto your back for VR purposes? That one was really cool for the, <laughs> for the, for the time. Um, I'm not sure, actually. I don't know what the plans are. Um, but uh, that one was cool. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, and, and actually, we, we got to, to try that out a little bit. But uh, yeah, you lost your password. Well, it, it wasn't our password. I mean, no. you know, we're a big company. And the Nightbot, I think this was done 
uh, like uh, when another event was streamed on, on our Twitch channel by, uh, I think it was North American team. And uh, so they created this Nightbot account, linked it to our Twitch account, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, you know how it goes. Things get lost and mm -hmm. they, they forgot to like mute or uh, take the bot out, let's say. And then, so they just leave it running. And I don't know. I guess it, it hasn't been enough of a problem that we really decide to do something about it. Uh, I, hope, I hope it's still bearable for you guys. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of like a running gag now anyway, so I, I guess if we, if we remove it, people would start missing it, or maybe they, they would start putting it into the chat instead. <laughs> it's you know Christmas it all year round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On your guys' website, the escape key and the enter key are red in the images shown for the keyboard. Is that an error, or will there be an extra keycap features for the keyboard? Ah. Well, that's actually part of the reason why uh, we're, we're talking about it. Uh, let me just check that to be sure as well. Because, uh, yeah, no, I think you, uh, OK, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why that is in a, in a minute. Uh, uh, and that's uh, because there are two different keyboards, actually. Um, right, actually, maybe let's get into that right now. Because in the box, behind the first box, let's, I'll slide that one here, there's another one. And it's called GK41 Dusk. And as you can see, I hope you can see. There you go. It's there is, it's, it's, there are slight differences. Oh, uh, oh. never Ooh. mind. All right. Okay. Yeah. It seems like we lost the close-up cam, so we're gonna have to do it like this for now, at least. Uh, maybe we can. Um, can you maybe switch back to the close-up cam? Just disable and uh, enable it. See if that works. Yeah. Have we tried turning it off and on again? No, but we're no, about we to. No, we haven't. But we're Please stick with try. us. Any Doesn't day seem like it's now. working. Uh, ooh, ooh. Let's see. And let me just check if the cable. Ah, right. Yeah, there might be your problem. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like somebody plugged it out by accident. But let me see if I can reconnect it for you. Ah, uh, yeah. This should be. Ah, uh, wait. No. It's... Oh. That's not good. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think we can get it to work. I think we'll have a close-up. <sighs> well, we're trying. <laughs> He's feeling himself. Mm. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> Is it working? Uh, no. Let, <sighs> me, let me turn it on and off. Right. OK. I got a light. And activate. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. See, we know what we're doing here on the live stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got it. You know, wouldn't be an M live stream without a hiccup. Yeah. Well, we. I mean, we want to show you guys. We, we, this is all planned, of course, right? I mean, we plan these kind of like inconveniences to show you guys that you know, this is live. <laughs> we're humans. So this thoughts. was totally planned. <laughs> um, anyway. Right, so uh, this is the main product I want to talk about before, but just to address the point that uh, I'm sure, who was it that said, I, I, okay, uh, I don't see it in the see. chat anymore. Oh yeah, TYX or Tix Demon. Demon. Uh, yeah, you saw one with uh, the red uh, enter and escape keys. Well, I mean, that's the one, right? Uh, and it's not just that, but also the, uh, some of the function keys and uh, some of the other keys are uh, light, lighter gray than the other keys. Oh, what you doing? It's OK. Just. Uh, <laughs> all right, Lee. Lee. Lee, the cameraman, was just uh, making sure that the camera angle was better. Anyway, uh, but that's the GK41 Dusk you were probably looking at. And that's actually a variant. I mean, the, the keyboard itself and, and the basics that I'm about to tell you about are the same. Uh, but indeed, the, the difference there, the main difference is the, uh, the appearance, and that's in the keycaps. Um, and there's also a, a, bit of a, a little bit of a surprise on the inside uh, that I'll show you guys later on as well. But let's start with the, uh, with the main product, the GK41, uh, first. So uh, let's see what I can do uh, is... Well, I mean, obviously, here's the box. And if you guys see this one in the shop, uh, on the back is always, there's always more information. There's the features. Uh, there's the specifications here if you need to know them. Um, but the main thing to know about it, it's a mechanical keyboard. And it's on the more affordable end of the mechanical spectrum. So mostly, I mean, a lot of the mechanical keyboards are you know, close to like 100 
well, you know, about 70 to 100 euros easily. Um, this one, uh, I believe the MSRP is around 50 or 60. So that's quite a bit less, and that's a bit, quite a bit more affordable when it comes to uh, mechanical keyboards. Um, and to get to that price point, I mean, you do have to make some choices. So a little bit of an unboxing. Uh, on the inside, again, it's not a bad box. It's, uh, it's quite nice. Uh, it's all the, the, the white stuff there. Uh, you got, of course, your uh, uh, mandatory uh, stuff, the uh, regulation stuff. The, there's a quick start guide. I mean, I guess everybody will know how to use a keyboard by now, but hey. Uh, there are some stuff there, of course, th that are uh, not that self-explanatory. And then in the box, you'll find basically two things. The keyboard itself and a keycap puller uh, there. So the keycap puller you can just take out if you need to. Actually, Lee was, uh, was cleaning the keyboard earlier today. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I had my uh, Cheetos fingers all nah. over it. So, yeah. we, well, we've obviously we've been testing it a little bit before the live stream, but you know we also want to give you a bit of an unboxing. So then we had to box it back up. Anyway, it's a wire keycap puller, which is always uh, quite useful, very handy. Just slides right over. I'll show you in a minute. Um, but that's included. And then other than that, it's it's the keyboard, which I mean it's well protected, right? So uh, within the box and in logistics, uh, you know, while shipping it, really nothing can happen to it. Uh, protective plastic and then there we go and I'll get rid of the box so it's not in the way so here we go it's a full-size keyboard as you can see uh, it's got a floating key design so uh, I mean one it looks nice and secondly it also makes keeping it a bit cleaner is just a that little bit easier other than that, it's, uh, as you can see, it's quite, let's say, basic. So it really focuses on the essentials. Uh, it is quite sturdy still, even though it's, uh, it's mostly a, a plastic keyboard. So it, now, some of our keyboards have that uh, aluminum top plate, let's say. So this one has a plastic one. So that's one of the uh, ways, the, the smaller ways that we've managed to get it within a, uh, a lower price bracket, let's say, uh, to keep it more affordable. That doesn't mean that it's less sturdy. So it's still, it's quite sturdy as hell, I have to say. Um, that's really, uh, it, it does look strong, yeah. And I do want to highlight that because that's one of the things people think of when you say, oh, well, there's no metal top plate or something. Oh, then it must be flimsy. No, this one's actually quite sturdy. Um, other than that, so the, the, the base keyboard, the GK41, as you see it here, uh, you know, we've gone for a, 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 also a simplified look, let's say. So um, all the keycaps are the same color and it's basically like, a, you know, an understated. It's not trying to scream at you that it's gaming or whatever. Uh, it's not trying to do anything crazy. It just wants to be a really good keyboard and good value uh, at this price point, which it is. Um, let's see, there is a, like, on the bottom here, so here you can run your, your cable for your headset, for example, through. So you can actually, uh, you know, it, it can run underneath your keyboard uh, without actually causing any issues in terms of stability or wobbling, or you don't have to run it alongside the keyboard. Uh, so that's always nice. You've got the, uh, the feet, of course, to, uh, and it's got, I think, three, three settings, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. There's one. Oh, yeah, see. So there's one embedded in there as well. Two. And then there's, of course, the, the third one, which is all flat, basically. Uh, there, it's standard. It's, it already has an incline, of course, which I think well, it's pretty standard with the keyboard, so, uh, but that's normal. And uh, it, of course, has some really nice uh, anti-slip feet at the bottom there. I think there's five of them. Yeah, that's five. Uh, so that's always nice, so it doesn't really move under uh, usage. The cable, it is attached, so it's not detachable, and it's a braided cable, as you can see, uh, which, again, it's also quite nice. Um, you know, it's a bit, there's still uh, some pretty good quality feel to it in, in the areas where it matters uh, on this one. Uh, also on the cable there, you can see there is a bit of a cable tie, like this, the, the rubber thing that is on a lot of our products' uh, peripherals, that, you know, any excess cable, uh, you, you don't have to leave just hanging around. You can, you know, pretty neatly uh, put it together there and then just uh, put the cable tie around it like so and then it's uh, it's kind of like a something to keep the the clutter away from your desk 
Um, obviously, USB powered, so uh, it's got a gold plated, I'm not sure if you can see that well, but it's a gold plated USB, uh, I believe it's USB 2.0. I mean, there's not, there's not much point in making this uh, like a USB 3.1. Gen 2 or something, uh, because there's no, not really any data transfer going on there apart from uh, a thousand hertz polling rate, of course. Which again, it's that's pretty standard, but it's 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 more than good enough for a gaming keyboard. Um, and uh, there's some RGB going on, which I will show you in a minute. Before I show you that, I also want to show you the switch. And to do that, I will demonstrate the keycap puller, which let's see. You just have to lift it over the key, and I'm doing this with one hand now. Normally, I would do this uh, like sitting down when it, the product is sitting down on a table. So just put it around the keycap, and then pull on it, and it just comes off like that. And as you can see, the switch underneath uh, that comes out is a red color, and it has a standard, oh, I, I want to say standard MX type stem. So it's like the the little plus size or cross size, let's say. There are kill switches. Yeah, they, the brand of the switch is Kale indeed, uh, and these are Kale red switches. And red, in this case, uh, means linear, so it's, uh, it doesn't have a tactile or audi audible click. Uh, it's a very smooth linear movement without any sound, without uh, any tactile, um, yeah, tactile thing about it, n no bump. Um, but yeah, this is really nice, and it's it's quite good for gaming as well. Uh, and also, it's less noisy. I mean, we noticed that I'm very used to the, the clicky keyboards these days. And while I was using this one, um, yeah, it was uh, it was noticeably um, quieter and um, much easier on the ears for everybody around me while I was uh, using it. So that's nice. Um, Let's see what brand of yeah. So Star Citizen asked indeed. It's uh, it's Kale. Yes. What's the difference between the GK50 and this one? Sorry. The GK50 and this one. The What's the difference? Um, well, what is low profile. Uh, well, the GK50 Elite. Right. Um, I don't have it here. Well, we do have some samples here. It's actually that's also one of our favorite keyboards. But uh, the GK50 Elite does have, for example, the uh, brushed aluminum top plate as one of the big differences. Um, it also has different switches, so I don't think the GK50 Elite uh, comes with the Kale Red switches. It comes with the boxed white switches, which is, uh, they, they, those are really, really nice. Oh, don't bother, uh, Lee, it's fine. Um, I mean, we've done plenty of live streams with that keyboard. So uh, our favorite version of the GK, well, my favorite version of the GK50 Elite um, is the one with the boxed white because I mean they add extra stability, extra durability, um, and just all around they feel excellent. Uh, but we also have them available with the kale blue switches, which I mean both of the kale blue and uh, boxed white are tactile and audible, basically clicky switches. Uh, so that's also one of the major differences. Uh, so this one uh, only has the the red switch, so no clicky. Um, and another big difference uh, you will see when uh, I connect the keyboard is the RGB lighting. So the GK50 Elite has uh, per key RGB and can be fully customized. Uh, this keyboard does have RGB, uh, but it's it has, uh, let's see if how, how, how I can put this uh, the right way. It, they are fixed colors in 10 different, so six different colors in 10 different fixed zones, but it can do uh, I think 10 predefined effects. So uh, yeah, the RGB is also one of the things that you know uh, are, uh, is a bit uh, less advanced, less premium, let's say, than compared to the, the more expensive products like the GK50 Elite. Uh, so again, that's also one of the, the areas where you know uh, we thought to get to a certain price point, that's one of the things that we can uh, we can probably uh, you know uh, yeah not spend quite as much money on and that will lower the cost. So there you go. Um, well, technically, I mean, what is RGB? So Weko is asking, it's not <laughs> RGB, it's rainbow. Yeah, I see your point. Uh, that's a fair point. Yeah, uh, that's one way of putting it. But I mean, RGB, you know, uh, red, green, blue. Yeah, uh, it, it does have those colors. Uh, so technically, it's a bit diff difficult. What we do try to make sure is that we actually mention on the box and, and on the web page and everything that it's uh, 
it's a fixed pattern, let's say. So we, we don't say it's fully customizable, it's not per key and stuff like that, what we do say in the other products that have it. So we do try to make sure that there is that distinction. Um, but let me, um, let me connect it up. Um, and also then maybe, uh, maybe in the meantime, we can show the, the slides for it. Yep. Uh, we can switch to the capture, uh, Lee. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah, we've got the, the key visual here, of course. And here you can already see, I mean, yes, there is an RGB effect, which we show on all our uh, RGB capable uh, products. Uh, but on this one, it's kind of like a fixed RGB effect. Uh, so the colors don't really change. Here's a bit of a, uh, an overview of the, like the key features, let's say. So on the left top, you can see, yeah, it's a kale red switches, as I've mentioned. Uh, they last, by the way, they have a durability, rated durability for 50 million, uh, over 50 million uh, actuations. So that's still very, very durable. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why mechanical keyboards are so popular as well. Uh, it's kind of like an investment, but it should last you quite a long time. Um, as you can see there, six fixed color LEDs. So basically that means that there are six colors basically uh, that are already fixed in 10 different zones um, and then there's on top of that there's like 10 predefined effects which I will uh, demonstrate a little bit later as well uh, there are the uh, the hotkeys that we have on other products as well so uh, you know they work really well um, uh, as I've shown, we have the adjustable keyboard angle, so that's with the uh, the feet basically at the bottom. Uh, we have our, our basically our recognizable custom uh, octagonal shaped keycaps. Uh, so you know those that you also find on our other keyboard. So they are the same style and shape. Uh, the ergonomic floating keycap design. So I, I showed you guys right. It has a floating keycap design, which again it's, it looks quite nice, but it also uh, allows for. Uh, easy uh, access to a bit you know to cleaning it a little bit if you need to um, this one also it's a pretty nice uh, feature by the way but it uh, supports onboard memory for three preset profiles so if you have things like macros or uh, you know things that you've got preset for games or for work purposes doesn't matter uh, there are actually three profiles so a bit of memory on board uh, to do that which again that's pretty nice uh, for a product in this price range uh, it has hybrid 6 plus N key rollover. Basically, that means that it, you, know, you should almost never run into a situation where you have, uh, you're have you pressing a couple of keys at once and uh, the keyboard stops registering uh, the uh, individual keys. Uh, so basically, that should uh, never happen. And of course, it supports MSI Center. And the MSI Center support, as you'll see, it's mostly down to that uh, onboard memory uh, and the three profiles that you can set. So it's basically focused on uh, macros, uh, recording macros and stuff like that. Uh, but I'll show you that uh, in the capture in a minute. And also here it says the MSRP indeed it, uh, doesn't show euros or dollars. Again, this differs a little bit per country and per, per region, but uh, should be around 50 to 60 uh, dollars or euros ish, which again, that's pretty much uh, on, the, uh, on the entry level side of uh, mechanical keyboards. Um, let's see. So yeah, a little bit about the switch before we move on. So uh, the KL Red switch, as mentioned, it's a linear switch, which means no uh, no click uh, and no bump that you can feel. Um, it has a pre-travel of 1.9 millimeters and a total travel of four with an operating force of 50 uh, grams. Now that may not mean much because, I mean, when I first started out as well, I, without context, what does this mean? Is this good? Is this bad? Is this light? Is this heavy? Uh, to give you some context at least, uh, we, I also added the kill blue next to it, which is a uh, audible click switch. So basically that's the one that you hear and feel when you click down. There's a, a point where basically you, you can feel the actuation, let's say, and you can also hear it because it uh, makes a click sound. The pre-travel is the same, 1.9. Uh, the total travel is also the same, uh, it's four millimeters. Uh, the operating force is actually the same as well. However, because you have that tactile bump, uh, that requires, it's like a, a, a threshold, let's say, that requires just a bit more uh, force to, to get over. And once you get over it, it drops off again. Uh, and I'll show you that in a minute, how that works. But the tactile force bump, let's say, is 60 grams. So it's just a slightly higher than the rest of the, the key of the switch. Um, and this is, I mean, it's, it's neither light nor heavy, right? We have keyboards, uh, I think the GK71 uh, red switches. Uh, that we have. That one has a, a very light switch. So that one is actually, I believe, some, somewhere around 
40, 30 or 40 grams, so it's, it's quite a bit lighter than, than uh, the Kale Red. Um, but there are also switches that are quite a bit heavier. And I believe, Lee, you're, you, you're a keyboard aficionado, yeah. right? So uh, wh what do you have, by the way? Uh, I have uh, 35 grams actuation force. I so light. Prefer, I prefer to have it really light. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, I'm more, uh, I like to build them myself more than buying a pre-built because that way I can customize the way it sounds and uh, the way it feels for me. Yeah. And also the keycaps, uh, I like to switch the keycaps from time to time. But I gotta say, <laughs> building your own keyboard is very expensive. Yeah. Uh, like, I have, uh, I, I know some people might think that uh, keyboard builders are maybe a little bit weird for having like six keyboards, and I do have six of them. <laughs> One for typing, one for gaming, uh, one for work. Yeah, it it differs, yeah. and also like ten keyless or uh, an Alice keyboard, so like an ergonomic one. But uh, yeah, I have all of those, and uh, they all have different switches. And I really prefer linear in this. But case. I mean, it's not that crazy considering like you know a lot of people have like a different PC, for example, for gaming than they have for work. Well, that's true. Right. Yeah. So there's different requirements, let's say, and I mean. Mm. Sure, a keyboard to some people who, who I mean, in, if you'd asked me 10 years ago before I started working here, uh, I probably wouldn't have, well, I, I knew some difference, right? But it's like, to me, a keyboard was a keyboard. And I think for a lot of people, it's like that. But once you start really understanding, like, OK, there are differences. And most importantly, you start trying them out. For example, I know a lot of people love a uh, low profile tac uh, tactile uh, click keyboard basically for typing. It, it's, like a, it's almost like a typewriter thing. There's something very satisfying about it. Yeah. But for gaming, they nah. prefer, like for example, a, a red linear full size switch. So not the low profile, but like the full size because it just makes them feel like they have a bit more control over the actual uh, movement and it feels smoother. So. And that's just like a personal preference, right? And it just, you know, if that's your thing, uh, again, it's, uh, I mean, you can also look at it like having how many pairs of shoes you have, right? Some people just have, well, I have shoes. Oh, yeah. And I wear right. them to, you know, to social events, to formal events. I, I wear them around the house, but I mean, they're the same shoes. And other people will be like, no, 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 I've got, I mean, I've got sneakers for around the house, and then I've got like, you know, semi, uh, um, you know, uh, dress shoes for, for work, and then I've got like formal dress shoes for, for other events. So it's kind of like that, right? Um, and if you look at it like that, it, it, I mean, and it just depends on how much emphasis and how important you think it is and, mm -hmm. um, you know, how much you enjoy it. I guess you can also see it as a hobby. Yeah. I mean, who wears shoes at home in the house? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a fair question. But I mean, <laughs> No, but yeah, that's true. It's about like two hundred dollars a board. Uh, wow, and that's like w uh, with because it does, okay. So if you do that, right, you have like you need to have the chassis, let's say, right. Yeah. So the bare chassis without the switches. Is that two hundred already, or is that no, like no, 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 no? That's including like the PCB. Oh, okay, so Fair like the PCB is where you actually put the switches on. Yeah. So you could see the PCB as the motherboard. Right. As yeah. the, of the of the keyboard. Yeah. 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 And you also can think about things uh, such as do you want it to be hot swappable or not if you uh, if you buy hot swappable board it gives you flexibility to like put different switches on it but it comes with a price tag so. obviously yeah well yeah and also different sizes of uh, PCBs like 10 keyless or full size and also lubing the switches there are some people that do loop their switches uh, <laughs> some people don't do that I prefer to do it so I have more of a, uh, yeah, it sounds better to me. Why, why would you lube them? Like, what is the what is the benefit? Why would people do that? Uh, switches tend to have like this uh, scratchy sound when you don't lube them, uh -huh. and if you lube them, it actually removes that sound and it, okay. it creates a better feeling and sound when you type it. Okay. Uh, I'll type on it, I mean, and. Uh, but most of the time nowadays, a lot of companies, uh, if they sell switches, they, they come pre loop But I still remove okay. the loop and loop them myself again. Have you ever had squeaky switches that no. are actually, you know, uh, let's say, uh, how do you call that? It's like unlubed or something to the point where, you know, it's actually... Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah? I did. Yeah. Wow. Um, because I like the sound. Um, they call it thocky. So it's, yeah, it, yeah. it sounds like you're typing on wood. A thunk to it, like... 
Yeah, when it's like, bottom, the bottoming out part, I guess, right? You're talking yeah, about exactly. When, when actually, I mean, the bottoming out part, just for people who don't know, it's more like when you actually press the key all the way down. There is something, you know, something that hits something. Let's say there's mm -hmm. like a bottom uh, of the switch, and that's actually what what's called when when the inside of the switch, like the stem, I guess, when it reaches the bottom point. Uh, well, obviously, there's two materials hitting each other, so you're going to hear that and you're going to feel that, and that sound. I mean, I'm going to do it on on this keyboard now. That's that's bottoming out. Yeah. So. And uh, the sound it differs per case as well. Like you have metal cases, you have uh, polycarbonate cases, and my preference is polycarbonate because, uh, yeah, the thocky sound. It, yeah. it, it's just personal preference. It's like I'm. It's it's like luxury typing for me. Like oh it yeah, is. yeah. This is this is how. I mean, another yeah. example I was thinking about is like if you're into photography, right? I mean, most people, uh, you know, will be fine with doing holiday pictures or something with their phone these days because, I mean, let's be honest, they do pretty good photos. But if you really want to be professional about it, you're going to have like the, the body, right? So that's like a Canon EOS or whatever, like a, that thing's already like a thousand dollars. And then you're going to have, I don't know how many sets of lenses for each different occasion, right? And you're going to have a, a couple of presets for, you know, oh, OK, though this is a bit low light, or this is all right. I want to have like a depth of field shot or whatever, you know, a bokeh effect. I don't know. That kind of stuff. Um, you know, and that's, you have so many different setups. Uh, and also, and, and, and also that costs a hell of a lot more, probably, even yeah. than, uh, you know, being a keyboard aficionado, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, that's. It depends. Uh, uh, I mean, I've seen keyboards. You also have like those novelty keycaps. So there are people that uh, yeah. make their own keycaps, and then you have like it's made with resin, and you have like uh, let's say like a Pokemon uh, keycap, <laughs> and those can go for like uh, like a hundred yeah. euros a keycap. And when you go that route, you're gonna end up with like a keyboard. Yeah, but that, that's that custom, like a, you said, right? That's custom. So it's basically yeah. like you're buying like a one-off. I, I guess you could even see it as a work of art. You know, it's not mass produced mm -hmm. or something that's, you know, somebody put a lot of work into it and it's, it's like handmade. So that's different from something just rolling out of a factory at, at I don't know how many keys per minute, mm -hmm. right? That's, uh, I guess there's a big difference there as well. Um, yeah, some people, some people like quiet keys, uh, but I, I do want to say somebody asked in the chat, like uh, they heard blue was quieter. <laughs> I, I, in most cases, I mean, it, it's not always the same. I have to say some brands of switches, they do kind of tend to mix the colors up and it doesn't always mean the same. Yeah. But blue in general means clicky and mm -hmm. that means tactile, so that, a, a click that you can feel, like the, the bump you can feel. But also, you can definitely hear it. That's basically <laughs> usually what the blue switch is. The funny so, thing is, yes. uh, let's say uh, Sarge said you should use blues in the office. I do. And we all actually, well, I think all, almost all of us. I, I use uh, box white in the office. Uh, but it's, it's basically the same as using blues because, yeah, they are the clicky kind. Yeah, I use Gatoron blues. Uh, so I love so. it. Eric used to, you know, it used, to, uh, it used to annoy Eric to no end. And that's one of the reasons why I started using it because I, I love that reaction from him. Now he's actually, he has been using uh, the uh, GK50 low profile yeah. ever since I, I told him to, you know, he was laughing at me for uh, uh, using a, a low profile uh, mechanical clicky keyboard in the office uh, because he was using one of those old membrane keyboards like <laughs> I don't know Ouch. since you know he'd, he'd had since uh, I mean you could see from the dust and stuff and the wear on that thing he'd been using it for a long time um, so Poor Eric never had a, a proper mechanical experience, uh, not even a clicky one uh, at that. So, uh, and, and I said, you know, just just give it a try. I mean, if you don't like it, fair enough. But at least, you know, you got to try it before you before you judge it, right? So, and then he uh, he tried it, and I never got that sample back. So he's hooked. Um, so you, you'd never know, right, until you've tried. And that's always, especially when it comes to this kind of thing. I also didn't know until I started trying some of these things and I thought, you know what, actually there's something really nice about it and I never would have guessed. Somebody could have told me, they could have shown me videos that wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have, you know, it wouldn't have been the same as, as just experiencing it for myself and then deciding, you know, do I like this or, or do I not or, you know, what do I think about this? Anyway. He's old enough, he's old to, enough to have used an original <laughs> IBM kit. No, no, he's old enough to have made that one, to have designed <laughs> that one. But those are no offense, Eric, if you're watching. I mean, those are. Uh, but I, those I are like to, yeah. those are like high-valued ones, to be fair. 
um, you know, those are still considered to be one of the best keyboards mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to mechanical ones. I mean, you should know, right, Lee? Yeah, but I've never owned one. No, and no, no, no. They don't come cheap anymore. No. So. I think they still make them, but they're kind of like, no, I hesitate to say knockoffs. I, um, imitation, I guess, is the better word. Like, they try to get as close as possible, but obviously they're not like, you know, they don't have the original tooling anymore, yeah. so they, they try to get as close as possible to it. It's not quite the same thing. Um, but yeah, there's a, the, like, un, among keyboard aficionados, that is like one of the holy grails uh, that mm -hmm. everybody kind of wants. It's like the, the OG uh, keyboard. Yeah, I hope to have one in the future, but right there you now... Go. I have other priorities. Oh. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Yeah. Anyway, it depends on how hard you bash it, how loud a keyboard is. Yeah, that, there are some truth to that as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's, here's uh, some uh, differences. And here is what I was telling you about. So on the left side, you have the kill red switch. Uh, so there is uh, the, like the top line, basically. It, there's two lines there, and I'll explain why. One is for pressing the key down, and then there's one which is called the reset uh, curve or the reset uh, point, that's where you uh, let go of the switch and it has to come back up. And there's also some, uh, you know, they, they, what they do is they basically measure, uh, like an upside down scale, I guess, for measuring stuff. They measure how much force it projects uh, as you press it in and as it's decompressed, as it comes back up. And so that's what you see in this chart. So the top line there, and it, as you see, it's, it's quite, I don't know, is my mouse moving? Can you see my mouse? Yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah, we can. So, uh, this line here, the top one on the left, it's quite smooth, and that's the linear part. So this is what linear means, right? There is a very smooth transition from uh, about, I don't know, like 35 gram force, something like that, uh, actually, yeah, to about uh, here, to, and this is about 60. Um, and that's, like that transition is when you compress the key. So it, it adds a little bit more resistance as you press the key in. But it's it's so gradual that it's linear. There's no there's no uh, sudden change of that pressure. Mm -hmm. Let's say, right? So it, it your perception of it, it like it's very smooth. And then when it comes back up, there is like a reset point where it will it's very slightly, but it's pretty much well unless you're really paying attention to it and just you know uh, trying to decompress the key uh, at very slow speed with your finger, you're probably not even going to notice that point. Um, so, but there is just slight variation once you let go of the key, which most people don't pay attention to. Then on the right side, this is, for comparison, this is the blue switch. And the blue switch, again, that's like what we call a clicky switch. So it has a uh, click that you can hear, but there's also a tactile bump, meaning like that's the threshold. You kind of have to move over, and then you can actually feel that the key suddenly uh, kind of accelerates from that point, right? Then it it, there's less uh, resistance. So, uh, and that's what you, uh, I guess, would perceive as okay. Then I've actually pressed the key down. Like now it's now it registers, um, and so that's basically what you see here is like uh, around the one millimeter travel suddenly. The, uh, the pressure you need to uh, put in uh, increases a bit uh, more suddenly. And then there's like a point, which is the pressure point at which you've passed the threshold, and then it goes back down again. And that's what you feel as like that bump of, OK, now I've pressed the key, basically. It feels like the actuation mm -hmm. point. It's not always actually the actuation point, but it feels like it. Um, and then from there on in, it is still linear. And then conversely, when you let go of the key and it decompresses, uh, you will see a, a kind of similar reaction also, again, that it needs to get past that same threshold in the other direction. So that's what you see here, which is the reset point. Um, and then once you've uh, reset it, or basically let go of the switch, you will have the same thing over again. So it's, yeah, you, you, you get past that bump again. And uh, that's what a lot of people love about blue switches. Um, Before we go any further, yeah. should we draw one lucky winner for now for the yeah, Sonic game? Maybe wait a second. Maybe uh, maybe just uh, wait a second until we uh, until we highlight that. Uh, okay. um, uh, the the uh, what is it? The bundle uh, okay. that it's attached right. to. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. I mean, we have the hotkeys um, and just. Yeah, I just wanted to leave this one, this slide in as well, to highlight where most of them are located. So as you can see, uh, we don't have dedicated media keys, uh, but they are on the uh, function keys mostly. 
Um, and of course, also on the other, uh, the, the keys, the print screen, scroll lock, uh, pause, there's you know the, the volume uh, commands, let's say. And then the uh, insert home, page up, page down, delete, and end keys. Uh, there are the commands for that have everything to do with uh, controlling your LED, so basically the lighting of your, the back, back lighting of your keyboard. Uh, and to do this, you don't have to install any software. So that's also why we have these hotkeys on the keyboard. They're just plug and play in that regard. Uh, and you could control them through those hotkeys, even if you don't want to install any software. Um, OK, yeah, I think now we can uh, go to maybe the close-up view. And then what I'll do is I'll unravel the cable, and I'll connect it to this PC. And you guys can see what happens. I'll hold it up as I uh, connect the key, or sorry, as I connect it to the, to the PC. Here we go. Uh, not sure if there's anything happening yet. Not yet. Is it on? Uh, I think the USB port might be uh, hesitant to uh, to work with me here. Let me try this on a different one. Sometimes it's a bit finicky. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so at the moment, the RGB is not really on. But how I can see it works is because the uh, numlock key, or sorry, the numlock uh, status indicator is on. So the PC has uh, has recognized it. Um, and I'll see what's going on with the lighting. Uh, might be, here we go. Let's see, okay, yeah, so this is the static mode, let's say. And I'm not sure if you guys can see it that well, but uh, there is plenty of light. Maybe what we can try to do, Lee, if you're mm -hmm. feeling a bit adventurous, is we can uh, actually turn down the lights. Okay. And then the RGB will be more uh, more visible. So uh, we have two remotes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And then the other remote as well. Yeah. Just uh, yes. Yeah. Just click the the off button a couple of times, and then that should uh, dim the lights. There we go. Yes. Okay. So it's. Oh, this is. Uh, all right. Well. A bit too dark, or. No. Well, the thing is, like, it's still trying to do the the chroma key, which obviously, without the lighting in the background, that's going to struggle. Anyway, uh, and there's a bit of uh, chroma effect here uh, that's uh, <laughs> trying to do its work with the keyboard lighting. Uh, not that successfully, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, uh, but as you can see, it's plenty bright. Um, and. Uh, but the, the coloring on the keyboard itself is fixed, let's say. So, I mean, uh, you cannot change, like, uh, it's not going to be one color, right? There's always, it's always a rainbow uh, effect, let's say. And by pressing the hotkeys, which is, uh, for in our case, it's a dragon key, and then one of the uh, aforementioned hotkeys that are in this area, let's say. And then there's one key, which is the insert key. And if I press that, it's basically going to cycle through the predefined effect. So this will be, this is a breathing effect, as you can see. And I can, let's see, I can speed that up by doing this. Or I can slow it down by pressing these keys for a bit. And then it's going to be really slow. Speed it back up. And then I'm going to go to the next effect. Uh, this one is more of a, uh, what is it? Oh yeah. Okay. So it's more of a scan effect, let's say. So there's a there's a like a wave effect, which moving from this side of the keyboard, this side of the keyboard to that side, uh, which I can also inverse if I don't like the direction it's going, and I can say, look, I want to go. Now it's going in the other direction. Not sure if that's clear. Yeah, I think you can see that right now. It's moving from this side to that side. Uh, also, that I can speed it up to make it go faster, or I can slow it right down because I want it to go slower. Speed it back up. And then there's another effect. Oh, here, this is more like the scan effect, I guess, right? So this is like a, a scan line, which is pretty cool. Makes me think of a submarine. Yeah, that or like an old school CRT scan line, actually, right? <laughs> and I can also let it go in the other direction by pressing that key. And it can go slower, or it can go fast. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff that you can do with that. Um, this is more like the submarine one. This is like a radar scan, right? Going, uh, going all the way around. So yeah, there's a couple of cool uh, effects here. And let's see, yeah, this one is uh, 
Oh, okay. Yeah, this one basically is uh, going to have like a. It's, it's not really a ripple, but uh, like it sends out a pulse um, for every key you press, and it's going to then. Uh, yeah, well, sideways actually. So. And then let's see what this one does. Oh, this one. This one is the the ripple effect. So basically, that one goes out to all directions uh, for every key you press. Basically, all most of our keyboards have the same effect. So, it, it, I mean, on the GK50, I see uh, Indra Kuni. Uh, welcome to the live stream, by the way. Uh, they, he's using a, uh, a Viger GK50 uh, Elite, I guess. Uh, that one also has these kinds of uh, uh, lighting effects. So, you know, that's always cool. Uh, but this is pretty good, uh, pretty nice effects. It's just something that you could play around with. Uh, like next effect, let's see. Okay, so this basically has a like a lingering uh, light effect. So basically, it's like you press down and then it will slowly fade. I think fade. that's the one that Watcho is talking about, so, uh, sort of. I do look when the key was we press a key, only that key and some around. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So this is exactly. Oh, that's good timing. I mean, I yeah. <laughs> That's a that's a happy accident there, but yeah, you're you're talking about this. It's like you know when you're you're pressing it, and only the key that you press or the keys that you press light up, and then it slowly uh, and and a couple of them around it, and then it just slowly fades out. Um, let's see, and this one is more like a, a predefined uh, profile, like WASD. You know, in in, a, in certain games that you want to certain you want to highlight the the keys that you're using, for example. Um, so you can see some of the function keys. Uh, no, actually, not the function keys. It's uh, the first row, uh, one through six of the uh, number keys that are lit, the tab key, uh, the left bottom control, space bar, uh, WASD, of course, uh, and uh, Q, R, E, and what else? F? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure what game that will be, but hey, uh, and you, I think you can customize this in uh, in the software as well. Um, let's see. I have a feeling that would be something like Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then of course there is a profile where you can simply turn the RGB off. So that's also one of the uh, one of the the profiles there. So yeah, um, there you go. I think we can uh, turn the light back on now because yep. I think we've demonstrated the uh, the RGB there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that one just press it uh, to 40. Yes, good job. All right. Um, that that look shooter Fortnite See? little game. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, cool keyboard. And I mean, again, you know, it's uh, for for the price point uh, because again, this is more like an entry level uh, mechanical keyboard for the price point. It's it, it still has a, a lot of features, uh, and it, the the quality, especially that, like the essentials and the quality, is really good. Um, the switch quality is good. The keyboard feel and the the sturdiness is still really really good. So no compromise in that part. Uh, the cable also that you know braided, so it's still strong and durable. It's not going to catch on anything. Uh, so where it matters this keyboard still delivers and so if you really want to uh, just have a really solid uh, mechanical keyboard like maybe you're looking for your first one and you, you don't want to spend a uh, hundred dollars or euros right away because I mean that is quite an investment to be fair um, but you are looking into getting a mechanical keyboard because you've heard a lot about it and you just want to try it out I mean you know 50 60 uh, euros or dollars that might be way more acceptable and you still get a pretty good deal and uh, some really nice features to play around with as well. Um, okay, maybe we can uh, take a short look at the uh, the software. Yeah. Let me just indeed start it. So the software is of course in MSI Center, which I have running here. Now, um, when you install MSI Center and you have uh, MSI peripherals connected, most of the modules that you see here under features, uh, or basically on the feature sets button at the top right, uh, it are modular. And as you can see here, Mystic Light I've installed, but there are these buttons uh, here, the, the, the little uh, menu option that says uninstall. And everything under here is an optional module. So it's very modular, our software these days. It wasn't always like that, by the way. So this is something we had to uh, fight for to, to get it like this. Uh, <laughs> we're pretty happy with this, by the way. And uh, let us know what you guys think about it as well. Um, but the, the gaming gear uh, part, that one is required. So once you uh, plug in any 
peripheral, anything that belongs to the gaming gear category of MSI, this module, and you have MSI Center, this module will be automatically uh, installed. Why? Because this uh, module has some of the uh, essential, let's say, drivers and uh, basically, yeah, feature uh, support that you need to use your product properly to make it function properly. Um, so as you can see, I've got three uh, products. I've got two keyboards connected here. Uh, but this is the uh, GK41, as you can see. And when I click on it, what I get is, uh, well, the profile. So it, as I said, uh, there are three profiles that I can select. Haven't really set them up, but uh, yeah, I can toggle around with that. I can set, for example, if you, uh, I don't know, if you have a family member that uh, is uh, uses a very different layout of, uh, you know, or a different language and wants to type in that. I mean, you can do it in Windows, obviously, but you can also use it on your profiles here. Uh, you can record macros, as you can see. It's currently limited to 30, I guess. Um, and then you can start recording macros um, and then, yeah, you know, put them, um, uh, what is it? Is this recording? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, but yeah, you can, you can record macros and then uh, save them. Um, and you'll have them on your keyboard with you. So even if you, if you, I don't know, I'd, I hesitate to say if you want to go to like pro gaming events, <laughs> uh, but hey, it, it's it's an option, right? So you can have your profiles there, or you can take your keyboard to work if you really like it, and you may have like some macros that you're using there for production purposes or something, or uh, if you're a, a professional reviewer or benchmarker, you'll probably have some macros set up as well, um, because you you know you'll you'll be running. Uh, batches of, uh, of benchmarks or something. Uh, that's something you can do. Um, so that is pretty much how that looks. And then if I look at Mystic Light, as you can see, the keyboards, both of them are, uh, yeah, they are uh, both visible in Mystic Light. However, uh, this keyboard ha will have a bit more options in terms of uh, the color setting, because as you can see, this uh, on the color setting, well, as I mentioned on the GK41, you can't really uh, change the color that you have uh, on the keyboard itself. So if you want to, uh, I don't know, change everything to a certain, uh, to a single color, unfortunately on this product, that's not possible. So you'll always have the RGB, but you can choose, and this is the LED style, that's basically the, uh, uh, the animated effects that it's uh, showing. So you have here, you have the, the steady, which is basically always on. You have uh, the breathing effect, you know, slowly, slowly going uh, dimming and then coming back on again. You have the wave. Uh, you have the radar, which the, the, I, I called that the scan line. Uh, you have the whirlpool. I think I called this one the radar. I mean, it's <laughs> it, it's the same thing, but uh, uh, the horizon, which yeah, if you press a key, then it will only uh, horizontally show uh, like an effect. Uh, the ripple, which of course goes in all directions, which is really nice as well. The reactive, which is the one that uh, uh, Wacko was uh, so fond of. And uh, you can even uh, customize it to, but it's mostly down to the uh, brightness. And oh, okay, look, this is the, uh, sorry, the customize uh, effect is basically the, the keys that were highlighted. Uh, so it's basically your, your, pro, your gaming profile, if you will. Uh, so here you can actually say, no, I'm not using the space bar in this game, so I don't want to highlight it, but I do want to highlight, for whatever reason, uh, the MSI key. There you go. So then it would light up as well. So here you can customize as well. You can even set the brightness levels, I guess. So if you want, don't want them to be quite as bright or one to be brighter than the other, hey, it's possible. And then uh, you can apply that and it will, uh, it will apply it to the, to the keyboard itself. And now uh, my keyboard is only showing uh, the lights yep. on the designated keys. So that's, it's as easy as that, basically. Um, does it have an F13 to F24 button? No, Action Brother, I, this one doesn't. It only goes up to F12. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for that, you'd need the extended, uh, the extended DLC or something. <laughs> or get a second keyword. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, I'm from Argent uh, Argentina. Uh, Wacko is saying I need that uh, N with a, I'm going to call it the squiggly line or the tilde on top of it. Uh, I don't, I never know what it's called. Uh, yeah, but that's, I mean, honestly, that's one of the things and one of the difficulties for us as well when creating these keyboards is, you know, when we make a graphics card or a motherboard or a monitor, it, it's, that product is uh, the same the world over, right? There's no changes. Uh, well, that's not true. Maybe a monitor, you know, the, like the power socket, right? The, your, your power uh, cord, that might be different because it requires a different one in certain countries. But 
uh, in terms of the product itself, like you know the, the panel, or if you're talking about the motherboard, all the connectors and stuff, it's the same, right? It doesn't matter which country you buy it; it's going to be the same. For a keyboard, you have no idea how many different layouts there are uh, per country, and that's one of the nightmares that we have sometimes when um, uh, you know we make a keyboard, or you know we, we design a keyboard, let's say. And then we have to, you know, then uh, like theory and design and, and everything that's nice meets the real world, which means, right, uh, how much are we going to order <laughs> per layout? Which basically means how much do you think you're going to sell of these in each different country? And especially, I mean, I'm, we're, we're here in Europe, right? We're in the Netherlands. This is like the worst, right? Like Europe is the worst. Almost every country has a different layout. Not every country is huge, right? And not every country has a huge market. So if you have like, I don't know, a, a minimum order quantity of each different layout of, well, I don't know, a thousand units, that's quite a lot to sell. And you probably know that there are a lot of different brands that sell mechanical keyboards. So it's not like you're the only one selling, right? So it, there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's always a difficult choice. And that's also why, uh, actually, uh, the, the, in Europe, we only have the this one that we're looking at now, the GK41. But the GK41 Dusk, which I'll pull up in a minute, uh, that one we actually decided we are not going to carry, at least at the moment in Europe, because, uh, you know, we didn't think it would do well, as simple as that. So we have to make some educated guesses. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, the story about the GK41. Um, and let us know what you think. And again, it's, uh, you know, it, it's an entry-level mechanical keyboard. That's uh, never really an, an easy task, because you, you tend to get lost in, well, I want to add this feature, I want to add that feature. You want to make every product as good as possible. Uh, but I, you know. I think we're, we've done pretty well with uh, the choices that we've made and uh, the, uh, the features and, and uh, quality that we're offering with this one. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy about it. But let us know what you guys think as well. And also let us know what you guys uh, think is, you know, are some of the most important things uh, about a keyboard that you think are, the, uh, yeah, are, are like the things that you would focus on, for example. Mike's unboxing reviews and how to says hearts, hearts, hearts. Damn, I really want a GK41 Dusk in the UK. Uh, not sure if it's gonna appear in the UK. It really depends on, uh, yeah, on, on like again, like real world sales forecasting. To me, that's boring stuff. I never really like that kind of stuff. I like to focus on the products and the features and, and stuff, you know, cool stuff like that. Um, Let's see. High Demon is saying RGB makes up for most features. <laughs> what do you mean makes up for most features? <laughs> Does it have a wrist rest? No. I mean, that's again, if we'd add a wrist rest, that means it's probably going to add, I don't know, $10, $15 uh, or euros to the, to the price. Uh, because, you know, not just the material of the wrist rest, but also the, the, you know, the box becomes heavier. Uh, so that means shipping cost is a bit higher. And, you know, so it, it all adds up in the end. There's, there's like little costs that add up. Um, so again, that's one of the choices we made, not to add a wrist rest to this one. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to make that price point. Um, Edwin K was saying, I have an MSI keyboard and I game fine on it. The switches are fast enough for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know which one you have, but uh, yeah, we, we've made keyboards for quite a while already. And in the past, we were using uh, Cherry. I believe if it's a, it's a, if it's an older keyboard like around six seven years ago, it probably is one that uses cherry keys. But uh, those are a bit more expensive. Uh, NRT Antiquatera is saying the same. I'd get a dusk over the RGB. Okay, well let's let's cover the dusk as well, so you have a better view of what the actual difference is there. Um, and let me just start with opening up uh, the product page for it, and then we can actually see uh, some of the differences. So we have, uh, yeah, I, I basically I just open up the, uh, the product page, go to MSI.com, and then search for GK. Oh, I clicked the banner by accident. There we go, GK41. And then I've got two options, of course. I got the regular one, and I've got the Dusk. And what I'll do is I will put them side by side so we can see the differences. Right. So 
both of them have the red switch, right? So the kill red switch. So that's the same. Uh, so the big difference, I think, is already th the second feature showing. And I, I think it's right that they do that, because that is the, the, one of the reasons why you'd buy a Dusk uh, keyboard, is uh, the, the keycaps. So there is an actual uh, uh, inverse keycap set uh, included with this keyboard, which I'll show you in a minute. I have it in the box, so I can show you in real life. Other than that, let's see. OK, so the Dusk actually does, sh does uh, offer per-key RGB lighting. So that's the difference as well. So there you have a bit more customizability. Um, and uh, I mean, other than that, I'm expecting, I mean, yeah, we've got the same hotkeys, obviously, which makes sense. Well, actually, no, there's a few different ones here, which I guess have to do with, uh, with RGB, indeed, and a bit more customizability when it comes to color. Uh, also, 6 plus N key rollover, so that's the same. Uh, three onboard profiles, uh, adjustable keyboard angles, that's the same. And, and that's it. So yeah, the, the, the major differences between those two keyboards are uh, an extra, an additional keycap set included. Uh, and the keycaps that are on it by default also look a bit different, which I'll show you when I take it out of the box. And a bit more customizability, because it does offer per key RGB. So if you indeed <laughs> you're not fond of the, uh, the fixed rainbow, let's say, uh, then yeah, uh, GK41 Dusk might be a better option. But as I mentioned, it's not available in all countries. Uh, at least in Europe, I know most countries in Europe only have, because they had to make a choice, and they said, no, I think, you know, if we're really going to go for um, entry-level mechanical keyboards, which that's, we didn't have a mechanical keyboard in that price range before, so we wanted to offer something uh, that doesn't uh, kind of cannibalize, let's say, uh, GK50 Elite. Because if you're looking at GK41 Dusk, that one, in terms of pricing, and I'll, I'll get it on the table right now, but in, pri in terms of pricing, this one is probably going to be already quite a bit closer to the GK50 Elite uh, because of the additional keycap set that's included and the per-key RGB uh, that's included. So that raises the cost. Um, so yeah, and if it's the same cost, it, you're basically targeting the same people that are looking for a keyboard, right? So it uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, if you can, can you take us to the close-up view? And I'll, I'll show you the unboxing of that as well quickly. So uh, this is the Dusk, by the way, so as you can see here, GK41 Dusk. On the back side, it will tell you that it has uh, two different keycap sets. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. And of course, per key, uh, as it shows here, per key, Mystic Light. Uh, but let's take it out of the box, because other than that, it's quite similar. But the box is already a bit bigger, and that's because, of course, it needs to house that additional keycap set. So, obviously, we have the keyboard itself. Uh, yeah, let me just get rid of that plastic. But as you can already see, and I'll um, let me take the original GK41 as well. Here we go. So here you can see it in real life. So GK41 and the Dusk version below it. So as you can see, the keycaps is the difference. So this one. The bottom one, the, the Dusk version, has a, I, I believe they call it a two-tone, right? A two-tone keyboard layout. Uh, actually, it's three-tone because of the uh, red escape and ender keys, but hey. Uh, and again, this is like a personal preference, right? Um, what, do you, what do you like? Do you prefer that it has a bit of variance, color variance on the keyboard layout itself and the, the red uh, escape and ender keys or not? Um, other than that, it is pretty much the same keyboard, with, of course, the exception that this one does offer per-key RGB as well. And then in the box, this is the major difference below all the other uh, paperwork and stuff. You have, here we go, and it actually says on the box, additional keycap set. There you go. And uh, let me open that up and show you guys what that looks like. Uh, let's see. Let's keep it nicely and in the plastic there. And I'll see if I can remove that to show you even better. Mm. There is a whole key. I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't, like the, the caps don't fly out because I'm going to have to catch them afterwards if they do. Uh, all right, this is tricky. 
Is there maybe any tape holding it in place? No. No, actually there is. Ah, see, I thought I felt some resistance. There was some resistance in the force. Let's see if I can take this apart without needing a knife or anything like that. I didn't bring any sharp ob objects, but we'll get there. There we go. Yeah, so there was a bit of a uh, round sticky tape there. But now that we have it open, there we go. So as you can see, it's basically the inverse of these keycaps. And uh, an additional bonus as well, if you don't like the red escape and uh, enter keys, you do have, uh, this is a black escape key and a black enter key as well. So yeah, you can also swap those ones out. So it's basically, it just gives you a bit of option. Like, do you want the, uh, the letter keys and everything in the middle to be dark or lighter? Uh, or maybe you want everything to be the same gray color. Hey, that's also a possibility. So you can mi mix and match uh, basically as much as you want. But yeah, that obviously uh, adding another keycap uh, set. And also this one, remember, right? Every country, uh, especially in Europe, has, it, has their own layout. So that means this one obviously is a QWERTY, which is uh, the US international layout. But the, the accompanying additional keycap set has to have the same layout as well. So they need to order two of each. Um, so yeah, that, again, that adds to the cost. And so um, I'm not exactly sure what the MSRP for the GK41 Dusk is. But again, I would expect this one to be quite a bit closer to the uh, pricing for the GK50 Elite. Um, so yeah, then you you have to make a choice basically uh, oh and i even see uh <laughs> below that there was even some additional keys uh yeah this is the numpad and uh the other function keys basically as you can see they were even and the arrow keys in black instead of the gray and the keycap puller as well so that's all included in the box there uh but yeah other than that i mean i can pull the key cap off but as you can see it's also it's the red kill red switch is the linear one so no clicky uh, same linear very smooth linear action um, again it's very good uh, but other than that it's uh, it's the same keyboard that's obviously also why it's called GK 41 and then dusk added on to the end uh, it's like a, a flavor or a variation on the uh, on the original uh, let's see what the chat says I have is there not a GK50 Elite, GK50 key? Low Profile, GK71 Sonic Red, and GK30 Combo, all in UK layout. Wow, that's it. Well, I, I, I'm because your channel's name is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. I'm guessing you got those as samples to do reviews with, uh, but that is a pretty nice uh, selection you've got there. Yeah, and I mean they are all quite different, right? Because the GK30 Combo, if I'm not mistaken, the GK30 is a membrane. Uh, or maybe even memchanical as we as, as, a, as a term uh, but I think it's membrane indeed and then you have you know three yeah three pretty good uh, mechanical keyboards as, there as well so you got the GK50 Elite I'm guessing that's box white keys uh, or switches and then you have the GK50 low profile which are the uh, what are they called chuck I think technically uh, chuck switches which uh, also are clicky yeah, and then the GK71, which Sonic Red, which is also linear, but it's very, very light. So basically, uh, you know, it's very easy to, and, and fast to press. So it's like a red switch, linear, but even lighter than that. So yes. Is there uh, a gray escape key? Uh, good question. I think, did I not see it here? Let me just quickly check for you. And uh, doesn't look like it. No, so the enter, both the enter and the uh, escape keys, I can only see them in uh, either red or black. So the red one is on the keyboard by default and the black one, uh, black ones are in the additional keycap set. So indeed there is no gray uh, escape or enter key. So those ones are either red or black. Th those are your choices. I want to hear key sound. All right, uh, 
no problem. We've done that in the past. I'm going to try my best. So I'm going to put my lapel, uh, my lapel microphone as close to the key uh, cap as or to the keys as possible, and then I will do some fake typing. So this is the GK41. So there you go, um, yeah, very nice, good typing action, uh, smooth, uh, there's a, a nice thunk as well uh, when bottoming out, um, but yeah, I like that. And for comparison, I will also uh, type on the GK50 low profile TKL that I have on the table here as well. So there you go, that's quite a bit different, which again, the GK50 low profile is a clicky, low profile uh, switch. <laughs> it's click sound good. I know, that's why we, that's why we picked it for, uh, <laughs> for, for this keyboard as well. But if you're not into the clicky kind of switches, then uh, the red switch is also very, very popular and, and a great choice. Um, FRZ Eagle, uh, I'm wondering if you have a C, but that's a, is that French or is that Turkish? I'm not sure. And the G with the, the, the arrow on top, I'm not sure. Um, in the extra layout, I mean, this is just the extra layout that comes with this specific model with the uh, QWERTY or US International layout. So if you are able to find uh, the GK41 Dusk in, okay, Turkish, in your uh, Turkish layout language, I'm pretty sure it will have those keys. If those are part of the uh, layout normally, yeah, it, they will probably be included. My brother has the uh, GK50 low profile. It is nice. Yeah, there you go. Eric thinks so as well. It's it's <laughs> again, it's currently Eric's favorite as well. And uh, he used to he used to make fun of me for low profile switches, but hey. Right. Um, I think that covers the keyboards pretty much. Yeah. So let us know if you have any other questions in the comments, of course. We will, uh, if we can pick up on them, we will. But uh, in the meantime, let's move on with the show because we also have a game to play and some game keys to give away. Uh, how did this thing fit in, by the way? <laughs> I think like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. Right, we'll just put it back in the box. Nobody ever, nobody ever saw that I opened this, right? You guys didn't see that. Okay. So, um, yeah, the other thing we wanted to talk about today um, is we have a nice, there we go. Yeah, uh, we have a nice bundle. And that's the reason why we are featuring Sonic Superstars today, the game, uh, is we have a nice bundle with uh, a liquid cooling. And that liquid cooling is the E360, uh, which is this liquid cooler. I'll just put the image like that. Uh, so the 360 means it's a 360 millimeter radiator. So that means, you know, you get three fans on it. Uh, it's basically, it's, it's a high, uh, high capacity uh, liquid cooler that can uh, pretty much handle any uh, any cooler you throw at it, or sorry, any CPU you throw at it. Um, it uh, is available in two variants, so it's uh, available <coughs> in black, or yeah, basically dark, uh, and also the white one, uh, as you can see here. Uh, once I finish showing you this, I actually have a PC set up here, it's the white one, uh, which has that cooler inside, and I'll uh, put it on the table, but I'll have to shut down the PC, so we can't look at this page while we we'll do it, but in a minute I'll show you. Uh, it has very nice RGB design uh, as well. On uh, well, it has RGB fans, of course. There you go on the on the radiator, uh, but it also has RGB, a very nice ring design um, in the middle of the pump unit, uh, or the well, the CPU block. I think I'm not even sure if the pump is in here, uh, but. It could, uh, I think, I think it is. Uh, it's part of the MAG series, as you can see. Um, which also, like MAG is the more, uh, hesitate to say entry level, but they are more affordable. Uh, so it, it, it is on the more affordable end. It doesn't look like that, to be honest. It looks pretty premium to me. 
Um, so uh, this one has the looks of a, uh, of a much higher value uh, product. Oh, you can actually even rotate. I didn't know that, actually. I mean, oh, I'm, I I'm not, you know, either. liquid coolers is not my, uh, my uh, expertise. So I'm, uh, I'm just looking at this as well. Uh, I have looked at the product a bit, but I haven't really uh, messed around with it too much. Uh, so yeah, just to get the MSI logo, uh, you know, standing up, uh, standing up the way you need it to be. Um, full CPU coverage, of course, is really good uh, uh, with the uh, yeah the, the the block and um, what's it called um, micro uh, micro channel design the the surface area let's say of the cooling uh, block. Uh, all right, yeah. So the pump looks like the pump is indeed included in the uh, CPU block, so that's always nice. Um, all right, so they thought about, uh, they made sure that you can't uh, hear the res resonance of the pump when it's working. So that means it's, it's way more silent and there's no vibrations, which also means it's a bit more durable. So it will last longer. It won't uh, vibrate itself to pieces in the end. Uh, a very nice big radiator, especially on the E360. Uh, there is also <coughs> an E240, by the way, series, which basically means it's a 240 millimeter radiator. Mm which is a bit smaller. Uh, that one does not bundle the Sonic game, um, but I did want to mention it. Um, yeah, the, the uh, tubing is of course of high quality. Uh, it, it's got a braided uh, outer layer, or as it's called, uh, yeah, reinforced mesh. Um, but yeah, it, it's anti-evaporation, uh, and uh, so it, it also that one should be completely waterproof, literally. Uh, there are very good fans on it, of course, as I showed, they were uh, also full RGB, so that's also quite nice. Uh, actually, ARGB <laughs> is the technical term, meaning they are addressable. So also that one, you can actually, um, you can set the colors and, and make it change with everything in your, uh, in your PC with MSI Mystic Light. Um, well, I mean, this just uh, tells you which ones. We actually, funny story, we had uh, <laughs> somebody uh, kind of assembled the system for us and uh, they, they done goofed up uh, a little bit because they didn't test it uh, beforehand. But what they did is they accidentally connected the, uh, what was it? They connected the fans, the fan header to the CPU pump um, header, meaning and basically, the, the, the pump you always want to have running at like full RPM because that means you have maximum flow, which helps the cooling a lot. And then the fans, that's what creates noise. So you, you want those to scale up as needed, let's say. So what happened was the fans were basically always on a full blast. And the, uh, <laughs> the, the pump was kind of idling a little bit at like, uh, you know, I don't know, like a quarter capacity or something. So. We had a lot of noise while the PC was idling and the temperature was still like a bit higher than you'd want it to be. Not, not like dangerously high, but like suspiciously high, like there's something not right here. And uh, even when changing the fan uh, speed, didn't really make a difference in the noise. So uh, then we figured it out and we thought, oh, okay, yeah, well, somebody <laughs> connected them the wrong way around. Anyway, it can happen, uh, but we caught the, the problem just before the live stream. Um, but yeah, it, it looks uh, it looks like a really nice um, a really nice design. Uh, fits in really well, also with our white build, as you'll see in a minute. Um, and at the bottom, at the very bottom of this page, you will also see it's quite subtle. But uh, hey, we have this promotion, so you actually get a free uh, Sonic Superstars uh, game key if you buy one of these uh, coolers. And what you have to do to get that. Uh, game key is uh, that well that's actually part of this uh, uh, the, the press release let's say and there's a link there and basically what you do what you need to do is you need to go to the MSI member center there you can register your product and uh, by doing that I think you have to provide some proof like a, a POP right proof of purchase I think it's the technical term so you have to maybe provide the invoice or something like that uh, and then if you are buying the right product in the eligible period then you uh, uh, get the you you can claim the game code. Um, so that's basically how that works. Do we uh, have a shot caller? No, we don't, right? Sorry. <coughs> the, who's the shot caller at MSI on what you're going to build next? I don't think we have that. Uh, we, well, all of us are, let's say. Yeah. And basically, it's determined usually by it's triggered by either something new or something interesting that we want to show. So either there's a new component uh, or maybe a new chipset or. 
sometimes it can be a new game coming out that for example one of the big things that can happen is uh, if a new game comes out like a new Far Cry or something like that that supports um, uh, or no it was Far Cry in the past what was it Assassin's Creed uh, for example that has um, additional Mystic Light support uh, we'll build a PC specifically for that um, and then show it on the live stream but if you, I mean, we can take suggestions if you have. I mean, we've had Eric building, a, assembling a PC blindfolded at some point. I mean, we've done crazy stuff <laughs> before, and we're, we're probably going to do crazy stuff again. Uh, and if you have crazy ideas, let us know. Let's say Qualcomm would bring a 12 core ARM processor from server segment to laptops to pair Apple's end platform. Will you guys be like, oh, like that? Um, well, I guess that depends on, you know, how, how big we think the market is for something like that. And if it's like, uh, if it's a very niche thing like that, then yeah, chances are very small that we're actually going to design a dedicated motherboard for that. Because as you can probably understand and appreciate, there's a hell of a lot of work that goes into designing and, and verifying quality checking and everything like that, like a, a, a full product like a motherboard um, before it can go into production. Uh, and then you still have to sell them and you know you kind of have to make all that money back from uh that you spent in you know development research blah blah blah, and everything along the way so it's like again it's for me it's boring but hey it's a business case yeah it's as, all about uh, supply and demand yeah in the yeah. end so if if there's enough of a market for it yeah it's possible it's feasible uh but yeah i mean it, it it's yeah it has to kind of at least break even at some point. <laughs> That's not add to the problem <laughs> with adding Apple. Yeah, Al Alan's already, already <laughs> calling on, or pulling the brakes like, yeah, ho, 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 there. Yeah, let's not add Apple to the, to the equation here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, besides, if you register, you are covered for warranty and also sometimes extended. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, actually, Alan, for mentioning that. You're right. I mean, I, I didn't want to mention it uh, too much, but yeah, uh, we on some products, uh, we actually do offer extended, free extended warranty if you actually register your product. Also, it's a lot easier if you ever do, and God forbid, let's hope you don't, but if you ever do run into an RMA uh, situation where you, your product is malfunctioning or something, you, you have to... Uh, um, RMA it or you know uh, call warranty on it unfortunately um, having your product registered will speed things up significantly because that just means that you know we have all the uh, relevant data on hand already so all of these things help a little bit and you sometimes get some nice extras like here so it's always nice um, yeah so that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys because that's the reason why we have uh, why, why we're focusing on the Sonic game uh, because again you know you can uh, you can get it for free with uh, the e the MAG E360 uh, liquid cooler um, and so what I'll do now is I'll first uh, disconnect this PC and I'll uh, put it up on the table so I can actually show you guys the uh, the liquid cooler to do that I need to uh, shut it down do you, you want to switch the, to the main view if you want no, just to the main view first. Hmm. And now I think is a good time to draw our first winner. All right. There you go. Let me start up the lean. We have our first winner, hey. Topso from Topso. Yeah, Topso. Topso. Congratulations, Topso. You are the first winner of the Sonic Superstars game. There will be uh, there will be one more at the end of the stream. But uh, we'll send the code out to you as soon as possible. Probably tomorrow. Uh, yeah, well, in the coming days, usually. I yeah. mean, we always try to do it next day, but uh, yeah, we're also we're, we're only human, so. Uh, all right, here we have it. Uh, I, maybe it's better if I take the glass off, actually, because it will. Uh, I mean, right now there's like a little, uh, little bit of uh, reflection going on there. There we go. 
there were some fingerprints on there anyway from when I put it back on earlier. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, uh, here's the uh, here's the liquid cooler. Uh, and as you can see, it looks really nice already. Uh, we're going to have a close view in, in a bit. Uh, there's, this is the white version, as you can see. So there's also white tubing going all the way to the top. And then the, uh, um, the radiator is mounted on the top, basically, with a uh, push configuration. So it's basically it's pushing the air out of the top. Uh, and it fits nicely in this case as well, which is uh, the white case. I think this is the Prospect case. Again, I'm not uh, I'm not the case guy, but no, it's the Gungnir. Oh, it's Gungnir. R. I even got it wrong. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, so we, we have a, a, quite a bit of uh, you know white products as well, uh, white theme products. Pretty sure, yeah. There's a white power supply. I mean, this 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 nice cover is covering it. But if I show you the back, you can also see that this is this is where the uh, where the power supply is located. As you can see, that one is also white. So this has got a, a white power supply in it as well. Uh, a motherboard with a white finish. And uh, on the inside, uh, I don't even know which one this is. It's, uh, oh, there we go. It's the MPG Edge. Um, anyway, really nice build. The only thing we're missing at the moment in this one, because we didn't have it on hand, sadly, is a uh, white graphics card. So yep. we had to make do with uh, with this one, which I believe is a Radeon R, was it 6650? Yeah, 6750, something like that, XT. Anyway, uh, there, yeah, don't really focus on that. That's just there so that we had a, a card in there for now that it works. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, this uh, liquid cooler is really nice. What I'll do as well is I will now connect the cables. And then once you turn it on, you can also see the, uh, the RGB effects and everything like that. So let me just get all the cables here. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. We're going to play Sonic like, in a bit. It, yeah. it's, it's a good thing you guys can't see like our floors here because it's like littered with cables. <laughs> and we always try to clean it up a bit and uh, keep it nice and, uh, yeah organized but because pretty much every live stream we're doing something just slightly different and we need different cables and it's almost impossible to really um, prevent this from happening but we know it's it's you know it's not recommended like our cable management on the floor here is horrendous <laughs> it but is, uh, trust yeah, me that's guys it really part is. of the part of the territory I guess we don't really notice it. Uh, at least I don't really notice it anymore <laughs> after so long. Uh, all right, yeah, I ran these cables here because I wanted them out of the way. But hey, I'm going to have to uh, run them across the desk now in order to get to the PC. Also, not sure if you guys noticed, but we also have a really nice uh, white version of the monitor here. Uh, this is the uh, MAG. 274 UPF, which means it's a 4K monitor. Uh, and also that one, again, you know, if you're looking for a white build, this one is uh, is really a really nice addition to uh, to your setup. Uh, let me see. Let's connect the uh, peripherals like, real I, quick. I love anime as well, but I, I just think that there was there's not a high enough of a demand to actually do a collaboration like that. Uh, that's what I think, at least. Oh, well, we do have some collaborations with uh, anime sometimes. But yeah, like uh, like Lee said, it's it's still kind of niche, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, most people just uh, you know want the products, and, and some people mod them themselves. But it's, yeah, you'd be surprised that there's not that many people outright looking for a very specific anime series or character to be on their, uh, their hardware. Do you need a close-up this time, or...? No, no, no. well, no? yeah, we can try that. Yeah. Let's see, let's see how, if it's visible. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Go. Oh, wait. I mean, I want to avoid the green. <laughs> Same. Because <laughs> when it turns green, it disappears. But hey, uh, let's see what we can do. Just like magic. Yeah, something like that. But I mean, you can you can see, right? I mean, the uh, the RGB effect, especially within this uh, within the ring. Sorry, I'm blocking it with my hands. But within the ring, there, it's actually it's really nice. It looks nicer in person. 
the camera doesn't really do it justice because of the whole chroma key effect and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's really nice. And I think I just broke. Well, I was gonna say I think I just broke it, but uh, luckily I didn't. Uh, let me see. Why don't I see my mouse cursor? What is wrong? Uh, this happens sometimes when I'm plugging stuff in and out all the time. That's usually why if something works, you don't mess with it and you don't plug it out again. There we go. That's more like it. Uh, yeah. So I'll just boot up some. Uh, MSI Center with uh, Mystic Light, and then I can uh, show the colors. Green OP. <laughs> well, let's just go for some uh, some nice blue. Yeah, blue always does does nicely with uh, with white. Or actually, I can change it to white later on as well. There we go. Some nice icy blue. Like uh, for 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 one of my daughters, if if they're looking, um, then uh, this is like the Elsa build, <laughs> <laughs> the Ice Queen build. Uh, but yeah. Of, uh, so yeah. Do you want to build a snowman? It's do you want to? Yeah. Or do you want to build a snow build? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's go for a white. So now it's and it's it's syncing up uh, all the lighting, even the RGB sticks, as you can see uh, here. Oh, maybe we can show it. We can show it with lights off if you want to. Or uh, yeah, we can, uh, or at least we can reduce the the lighting. Sure. Yeah. Again, you know, RGB and and lighting is best uh, demonstrated when in low light situations. Here oh, we go. this is perfect. Yeah. So as you can see, I mean, the uh, this is on the front of the case. So there are three uh, RGB fans at the front, uh, pulling air in through the front, and then there's. Uh, Three fans at the top there are blowing the air out through the radiator of the uh, E360 here, and then there's one fan at the back which is also pulling air out uh, through the uh, through the back. So yeah, um, uh, let's let's go for a, let's go for another blue. I think that might look pretty cool with the lights. Well, yeah, it's actually not that much different from uh, from the <laughs> the white. Uh, what else can we do? Orange for a warm, yeah, feeling. something like that. Um, now I have to say I am slightly color blind, so I'm just guessing. <laughs> I mean, I can still pretty much guess colors, but when I'm being put on the spot to say, "Hey, pick this color in particular," it, it usually uh, it, it gets a bit bit more difficult for me. But I'm I'm right in between uh, in the capture. I'm right in between um, uh, red and uh, and yellow, but it doesn't look quite orange enough to me. So I'm going to try again. Let's see if uh, if uh, if this is better. Let's see if we can get a bit more orange this time. Hmm. hmm. That looks pinkish. Yeah. All right. Let's try this one then. Does that look better? That's even more pink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What if I choose pink? Maybe it will start or it maybe it will go <laughs> orange. I don't know. <laughs> No, this purple, but this is also really nice. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, some nice things you could do with that. Let's see if it will do yellow. Hey, yeah, that's actually getting close to green by the look oh, of it. Oh yeah. Like our our chroma key says it's close to green now. <laughs> and a red to uh, to finish it off. Well, that looks pink. That, that's that, that's purple. Oh, pink, purple. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well then. Snow Moon Zero Nine. Love the purple. Yeah, one. yeah. Let's. Uh, yeah, that one is amazing. All right. Yeah. Now that's red. There we go. That's proper red. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the purple one. Let's see if we can get back to purple. There you go. Anyway, and especially with the, the white build on the inside, the, the great thing about white uh, is that it reflects even more light. So basically, in comparison to having a dark, uh, you know, dark components on the inside, 
those will reflect some light, but less than white uh, components do. So this actually will amplify the effect, just having a lot of this white, uh, you know, the case inside being white and a lot of the components, everything will just reflect a bit more light, so just amplifies the effect. Anyway, it looks great, and, uh, and that this cooler also, again, I can confirm, uh, it, it does really, really well, uh, it performs great, and uh, yeah, let's play some Sonic and see how that game does, shall we? Let's uh, turn the lights back on. Yeah. I guess I'll just leave this uh, yeah, on the I table. Yeah, I think you can leave it on the desk, yeah. And then... Uh, now, to play Sonic... Let's go. To play I mean, Sonic, I will be using a controller. Because, I mean, somebody at the beginning of the stream kind of said it. Like, it, it's kind of like a... It's more of a console game, right? And I agree, uh, and it's best played with a controller, I, I still think. Sega! Yes! You're right. Right, so here we go. Uh, oh yeah, you, uh, some people were really uh, interested in when I started the game as well, so here we go. Three, two, one. I'm going to click it. And... Don't know if you guys can still see me. Don't know if you care. <laughs> Maybe I can shift the monitor just a little bit more to the side so it's not blocking the screen as much, but here we go. Uh, yeah, sadly, I, I tried to get the sound working so that I can actually hear it as well, because one of the things I really love about games like this, and especially Sonic, is the music. Uh, unfortunately, I can't hear that, but I, I did make sure that you should be able to hear it. I don't think they have sound either. Uh, oh, in that case, I might have to select... Wait, give me a second. Uh, that's probably easily fixable. Yes, it's trying yeah, it to play sound through my monitor. That's mode. not going to work. Now it should start to work. Yes. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, as I said, you know, one of the things, like, what adds to the atmosphere, adds a lot to the atmosphere, is, uh, is the, the music, the soundtracks. As you say, Wacko, exactly. Back to the 90s, but <laughs> in 3D. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty much the idea of this game as well. It's like, you know, capturing that nostalgia, but, you know, giving it a, a fresh uh, look as well. And it looks very crisp, very vivid uh, on this screen as well. Um, let's see, there we go. That actually does. I was actually quite surprised how good the game looks. Yeah. I thought it was going to give me more of like a, the old school kind of feeling, like the back to the 90s type of graphics, but pleasantly surprised. It's, uh, I think it's always difficult, you know, they try to find the right balance because you're, you're drawing, you're obviously doing a game like this, you're drawing a lot on nostalgia and, and you know, I, I used to, uh, I had a, a, a kid living down the street who had a, uh, some Nintendo... Super NES, I think it was, or something like that. And he had, you know, one of those old school Sonic, uh, old school Sonic games. And uh, I mean, I love playing it, but I mean, I was so young, I, I barely understood what was going on anyway. So I was just holding, you know, button mashing and making him go in circles and stuff. <laughs> uh, that was friggin' magic to me back then. Um, so that nostalgia, uh, yeah, I think they they captured that pretty well in this game, um, and it looks really nice. You have some options. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, you know graphics, for example, we got. Uh, I'm not sure why we're doing. Uh, let's do full screen. We don't need border or something. Uh, apply settings, yes. Uh, and obviously, you know, having this monitor, it's a 4K monitor, so we're uh, playing it in 4K. It just looks way more crisp that way as well. Uh, V-Sync, I mean, I can turn it on, I guess. With a game like this, I think that could be, uh, that actually could be a good idea. That does mean it's locked to 60 FPS. I'm not sure if we could change that otherwise. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, all right, it'd be interesting to see how much, uh, what the frame rate would be maximum, but uh, do I have a counter? Oh yeah, at the top left. Is it, sh that's showing for you guys as well, right? So yeah, 60 I, FPS I at the moment. I actually turned that on. All right, well, let's see what happens, right? Let's see what happens. We put it on unlimited. That does mean V-Sync is off, so there might be tearing. Uh, also, the capture uh, card that we're using is limited to 60 FPS, so unfortunately, even though I might be getting more FPS on my monitor, you're probably not, or actually, you're for sure not. Uh, okay, graphic settings, so we've got high, low, or custom. Yeah, let's just go for high, because that just puts everything on, um, and that's Good what evening, I want. Good evening, the Bob Brata Chatterjee. Brata, hello. <laughs> 
What is Bloom? Baby, don't hurt. No, just kidding. Uh, Bloom is, uh, you know, a lot of, um, let's say, a halo kind of effect uh, along objects. So that they kind of, they radiate a bit of extra color or whatever they, you know, light color, whatever they radiate. But there's like some, there's like, they call it Bloom because there's more fluff coming off of them. Basically softens it up a bit. Um, sound, wait, 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 I, I forgot. Uh, oh, Sega, you're gods. You didn't include any motion blur. I like that. <laughs> I hate motion blur. So yeah, same I, here. I always turn it off. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's one of the things. Anyway, uh, so background music, hell yes. Uh, and sound effects, SE, I guess that's what that stands for uh, at five. Background music's more important in games like this, right? Um, yeah, and uh, well, at the moment I'm choosing English because that's what I can understand from the selection. Uh, yeah, let's start the game. So you have multiple game modes here. Uh, I'm just gonna move the mouse out of the way, actually. Um, and I already, uh, I mean, I had to test it a little bit, right? So I did, uh, uh, oh, why, is it, why does it select that one? Uh, I did uh, a, a quick test run, uh, but there's a story mode, there's a battle mode, and there's a time attack mode. Um, now, it, one of the things in this game as well is you can play co-op. Um, and um, yeah, that means you can basically, to, to, it's not that it's that hard to clear levels or something, but it, you know, if you have friends and you just want to chill and, and play through a level together, you can do that, which is always nice. Uh, I think, I do believe it's drop-in co-op, meaning, you know, at any point you can, you know, they can drop in or if you open the session, I believe you can do that. That means that random people can drop in as well. Uh, battle mode, obviously, that's uh, like more like a versus uh, kind of thing. Uh, where, you know, again, you can play online or offline, uh, but I think you, you need to, uh, it's more like a challenge mode. You need to uh, uh, beat the other player to uh, complete certain challenges or get points or stay alive. Or, uh, and then there's time attack, obviously, how fast you can clear a level, <laughs> uh, which is also more of a competitive mode, I guess. You know, see if you can go clear levels faster than your friends. Uh, for me, I, I stuck to the uh, story mode for now. You have four... Uh, Characters you could choose from, obviously Sonic himself, uh, Tails, who can fly, Knuckles, um, I don't know what the superpower of Knuckles is, the, I think he has like a huge fist so he can smash through things, right? I think that's one of his, uh, the things that he can do. And then there's Amy, who uh, as I've uh, heard and read, and actually you can see in the background there a little bit, has a hammer as well. So she can, I think she can pretty much do what Sonic can do, like be really fast and spin and stuff like that. Uh, but she also have a, has a hammer to whack things, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna go with Sonic because, you know, again, old school. Um, I'm not an expert in the game, so that, you know, disclaimer, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> uh, let me see, so I did act one and two already, um, yeah, maybe I can do them again, because they were pretty fast anyway. Um, so it's basically, a safe option. <laughs> yeah, well, not just that, but I mean, it's, uh, let's start from the beginning as well. Uh, so yeah, you can, uh, just jump through. Collect your rings. There we go. How much our FPS are we on? 140, 130. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, it's all about uh, it's all about speed, obviously. So uh, let's see if we can pick up some speed. There we go. Woo! And then I need to watch out for stuff. So this big ring, that's kind of things you want to watch out for as well. As in, you want to jump into them. You get like a, a special instance where I think it's not. Oh yeah, okay. In this case, it's a medal or a coin. And you need to uh, like swing from these points that are indicated and they will take you closer to that coin. And the faster you do that, um, well, the more points you get. So it's always good. And there are also, the, like uh, yesterday, I actually got to oh. the level where you can get the Chaos Emerald. Yes, yeah. actually, I also uh, I, I collected one of them. You can get superpowers by them. There we go. You actually have to hit them. Can be a bit tricky. Looks like a Dreamer Sonic, 90s redeemed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they, they did, I mean, I'm not a Sonic aficionado, but I, I do, I did get that kind of nostalgic feel. Um, so yeah, I think they did a pretty good job at it. And then you get dropped back into the level once you've completed that. And then you can, well, you can complete more missions. I always, I, I honestly, this, uh, this always goes way too fast for me, meaning I, I always forget to uh, like jump for rings and stuff like that. 
Hey, there was something back there. Let's see if we can get it. Knuckles hey. can still glide in this uh, in this version, yeah. But I, I tried it yesterday with Knuckles, and I could still float. Like, yeah, float Ooh. glide. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, some extra rings there. Uh... All right. Well, that was nice. There we go. So a little uh, little portal that allowed me yeah, to get some extra. Ooh. Some extra rings. Ooh. Ooh. Watch out for the spikes. Hey. Mm -hmm. When I go down, when, it, when you fall, I'm always afraid that I'm gonna like, you know, drop onto something and die, but that's... Luckily, it doesn't happen. But, I mean, the scenery, look at that, those, uh, I don't know, fish? Like the, the, the whales? Mechanical whales? I'm not sure what they are, but it looks very impressive. Controller vibrates, of course, as well, while this happens in the background. But that scenery just makes it really oh. nice. Oh, there we go. Oh. So you can actually, you can <laughs> drop off things, and I didn't jump in time. That was my bad. So let's let's try that again, shall we? See if I can fail again. <gasps> hey, close. Made it. Oof. Oh. oh! And you made it. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's one level complete. Sonic speed run. No, I think it's a slow run, to be fair. <laughs> I oh, don't think I'm fast new at all. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, next. Let's just go for the next one. Let's go, uh, let's go act two. RGB sync to this game would be... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Uh, can you change up... Can you charge up like a bot? I don't know, actually. Maybe you can. I, honestly, I... Let's see. I'm just, I'm just mashing buttons. I, I'm not sure if I can in this game. It's like, I can jump like a ball. And then it, it, it starts rotating. But like, actually charging up... I know what you mean. Like, there would be... You know, sometimes it's like a spinning wheel, like you, you hold the brakes, but you, you push the gas as well, and then it just starts spinning. Oh, right. Get over here. Whee! But, I mean, the games like this, I, I just always see it like a chill game, you know? It's just chilling and having a bit of fun. But then again, I'm not very competitive or probably even good at, at a game like this. Uh, I haven't played the platformers for a long time. Damn it, I want to get I wanted to get that ring. Yeah, there we go. Is it gonna be another medal? Let's, let's have a look. Chaos? Yep. Oh, medals, yeah. It is. Alright, let's let's catch that sucker. Oh. Come on. Getting Ooh. close. Yeah. yeah! Not bad. I think if you jump through those uh, ring hoops, you actually get more rings as well. See, you have a ring bonus, so I didn't do that, but you could if you're good. Not like me. <laughs> right, okay, let's see. This does something as well. Oh, all right, well, it, it can do something. Um, I can't figure out how to, I guess. See, what was that? Did I kill something there? Pew! Right, let's go. Here. Oh, crap. Ooh, crab. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, there you go. So that thing can actually launch you, but you have to be like quick and you have to know what direction it's going to take you. Oh, and you can aim it. Ooh. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I jumped at an inopportune moment there. Uh, oh. That was the opposite direction of where I needed to go. Ah, uh, all right. Come on, do something. Uh, it's not doing anything. <laughs> That's a shame. Hey, all right. So, I always, when, when watching video, I, I watch videos about this game before I even attempted it. And it looked so complicated because I was like, well, how, how do I know what direction I'm supposed to go? It, it's going so fast. And then you kind of discover like, no, it's actually, it's, it's, really, it's really easy. Like, uh, 
Alright, let me let me figure out what how to how I do this again. Alright, here we go. Yeah, I need to uh I need to uh activate my uh doubles or what was it called? There's a special uh, special skill that you get from uh oh from getting one of the Chaos Admirals Emeralds. Alright, now I need to okay. No, this is fine. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so the, this thing, it basically, it does all the work for you. So it, it looked really complicated to me. But most of the time, you just hold down one directional button and there you go. I mean, you're going to miss out on a lot of content when doing it that way, obviously. But <laughs> in the end, uh, it, it wasn't as daunting as, I, as it looked, uh, as it first looked to me. You must be able to crouch and with the jump button make the saw. Mm, okay, well I can... I don't know. Okay, here's a cutscene because I got a boss fight, but let's... Uh... Oh, here we go! Yeah, you're right! Ah, uh, I didn't even realize that. There you go, thanks! You actually, uh, yeah, you're right. So, here we go. Whee! Oh, that was poorly <laughs> timed. <laughs> I mean, that's... That's the Peter special right there. The yeah. Peter, the, the Peter, uh, Peter platformer special. Oh no! Yeah, don't look at me like that. Uh, don't launch that stuff at me. I'm unarmed. I'm just a hedgehog, man. But yeah, so you can definitely uh, crouch and then. Oh, all right. Well, I only had one ring left. Let's get Rapid. under it. Oh. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh! Yes, I got him. Easy. Got him. <laughs> Was he, is he called Eggman or something, right? Uh, Dr. Isn't it Dr. Robotnik? But then no, he it's not Dr. Robotnik. I think this was uh, Eggman or something. Not sure. Yeah, I made it. I got zero rings. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So basically the story starts off, I mean there's a whole prologue of course, and there's like, uh, you know, uh, Eggman or whatever he's called. Uh, oh yeah, Eggman. Yeah, yeah. Eggman or, or, or Robotnik, I don't know. But uh, he, uh, he's, uh, he's taking all these other creatures or something from different, um, different places, that's what you saw coming by there. Uh, but the level design like this, you know, it's, it's very, it looks very vibrant, very cool, uh, very nice. Like, it really pays to have a good... Oh, okay. Didn't know there was something there. Anyway, it really pays to have a good monitor for this as well, because that will really help to bring out the colors and, uh, you know, bring out the nostalgic feel even more. Uh, oh, hey, am I going back now? I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, here we go. There we go. I'm probably messing up this level. No, let me go. Hey, we Ooh, got a gold ring a there. Golden one, I think that might be actually yeah. for a. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Chaos Emerald. Hey. All right, let's see if we can. No, that's that's the wrong way. <laughs> yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh. Wait. That's way way off. Come on. Uh, my timing's off a little oh bit. Oh no, 13 seconds. Come on. 10. Come on. Oh, oh I'm screwing up. Oh, yes. Perfect. Yes. Guys, he did it on purpose. He wanted to keep Build you guys tension. on edge. So the Chaos Emerald, and probably everybody who knows Sonic probably already knows this. I didn't really, because it was too long ago, but that adds a power. I'm not sure if that's like how it works in every series or in every uh, Sonic game, but hey, so now I get a, an ability called Bullet or a special power. Dash through the air. I don't know. Okay, so okay, I first need to select it, uh, and I do that using this, and then... Pressing X will 
deactivate ammo power by pressing left button and right button at once. Okay. Ooh. Oh, look. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, right? I can launch myself in different directions. There you go. That, that was the thing, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. So the other ability was uh, that I could clone myself into uh, different... Uh, oh, look at that. That I could clone myself into different... Uh, uh, or additional instances of myself that can help me break down barriers or even in a boss fight I've seen it used, so it can help you out with that. Yeah. Wait. Ah, uh, what is this? What can I do? Ah, uh, what is that? Hey. Oh. Do I have more? No. This is almost like Super Mario now. What the hell? Like, <laughs> those blocks. All right, I have to run through this, I guess, because it speeds me up. There we go. Whoosh. Uh, okay, anything, anything good here? Uh, it, I, I always want to, like, there's like a little penguin or a cat or whatever, like a little animal in there. So I guess you want to free them. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, there's these vines. There we go. Uh, now we're at where am I'm, I'm supposed to go? I guess the here. colors are great. Yeah, uh, ah, I agree. I really and now, agree. how did that thing? Uh, oh yes, there we go. And then it shoots a spike. Oh, man, old school games like this, man. It's, uh, it does capture the nostalgia. And it would have been even better if I could actually hear the soundtrack. <laughs> You guys can hear it, you lucky bastards. Unfortunately, I can't, but I did hear it when testing the game out. What am I doing? Come on. Come on. All right, let's get to this one. And what else is above here? Oh. All right, what do I do? Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, is there something? Oh, okay, here we go. That should be. Hey! We made it! Oh! oh. Ooh. Oh. Nice! They nice went up my uh, up my behind. Oh! oh. See, that those, those were too that fast. Was way I, too fast. I, I, I messed up there. Oh no! Oh! There's a whole flock of them. Uh, okay. See, there's one, there's a little thing trapped in there. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Ooh, ooh, that looks nasty. That looks like a nasty, uh, a nasty stinging animal or robot. Have you fought this one Am yet? I, oh, no, no. Oh, I'm supposed to. Ooh, oof. So how do I... Uh... So to hit him, you have to wait until he shoots his nose, and then you climb up on the... Yeah. Yeah? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, running away, are we? And now, yeah, okay, so dodge those. Running away, are we? Oh, 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 he's gonna... Okay, wow, that's... Uh... No. Shoot again, come on. Hit me. I'll just wait. <laughs> he's not even... Oh, I was going to say, he's not even <laughs> dropping them on top of me. Now he is. And go on, shoot. Oh, what the hell? I can't really... I think... Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 come on. Wait, but I have my special ability, don't I? Oh, maybe that works. You should try it. It should work. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Uh... Come on. Oh. Hey. Oh, it works. Nice. Actually, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> come on. Where is he? He went to the right. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, let's make it even more difficult. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Cool. Oh, what are you doing now? Was that taunting? Oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> sure. What are you doing? Is he going to go again? There we go. Maybe I can uh, jump on him this time. And yeah! Dead. Did I get him? There yeah. we go! Yeah, we freed him. 
Hey, we killed this level as well. Thanks, Swampy. <laughs> this is like Sonic and Earthworm Jim. Ooh, Earthworm Jim. Oh, I remember that, that once. That's cool. Um, anyway, yeah, you, you get the idea, right? Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Select the next act. Um, yeah, I think we might we might leave it at that, actually. Um, yeah. So maybe uh, in the meantime, you can draw the last winner. Yeah, of course. Because uh, we're going to give away one more code for uh, the game that we were playing, Sonic Superstars. Again, it's a really nice game. Really enjoyable. Uh, Skeets is saying, I might get this for my daughter. Yeah, it's it's great, like old school. You can see, like, hey, daddy used to play something like this when he was young. <laughs> but the colors are pretty pretty good as well, yeah. That should get their attention. So, yeah, I hope you, uh, you guys enjoyed this live stream. Also, uh, all the information about the keyboards, of course. Um, and, um, yeah. Let's see if we have our uh, our last yeah. winner. We do. Okay. The name is SWAT Cats. SWAT Cats with a Z or a Z. Cats. Cats. SWAT Cats. Congratulations. Congratulations. You also get a, a, a win a game code for Sonic Superstars, the game, which we're going to send out to you uh, in the coming days. So hope you enjoy that. Uh, we'll also, of course, include uh, instructions on how to redeem or activate the game uh, in the uh, communication with you. Um, yeah. The cooler is interesting. It is. It's a really good cooler. I'm not sure if we featured it on a live stream before. Uh, it is quite new. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely very good. Um, and um, let me just exit out of the game as well. Uh, yeah, next week... Uh, we have a live stream as well, uh, and there we will be covering uh, Total War Pharaoh. So it's going to be a, a stream mostly focused on the game there as well. And we're trying and we're hoping to get somebody from Creative Assembly to join our live stream as well mm -hmm. uh, for a, a, an interview. So that we can actually ask them some questions about the game um, and uh, obviously going to play it as well. And uh, the reason we are highlighting that is because we have currently have a bundle uh, also uh, going on with that game and specific hardware. The hardware that is eligible for the game bundle actually differs per country. Um, so be sure to check uh, for your country on MSI.com. Uh, you will be able to you will be able to find that uh, promotion page, uh, and there you'll find all the details of which products for your country are eligible. Uh, and if you want that game, if you want a free copy of that game, and you're going to buy some hardware anyway, uh, it's always a nice addition there, of course. Um, anyway, thank you guys for joining this week. And uh, see you next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.